you are new here, haven't seen any of my videos before and you're interested on how to work with clay or just learn some new things or need some inspiration, go ahead and feel free to like and subscribe. I try to post videos once a week about uh, how to work with clay from anything from making pinch pots to glaze making and kiln firing. So stay tuned. Uh, today's video is going to be about uh, making pinch pots and coil pots. Pinch pots are a good place to start. Um, it doesn't require a wheel at all. You're working with your hands. Same with coil pots. Um, they're just two different kinds of ways to make uh, pots. Pinch pots are actually one of the oldest forms of pottery. They're also called gum pots. So the pottery wheel wasn't actually invented until ancient Mesopotamia. And that's about 6,000 to 8,000 years ago. And that may seem like a long time, but mankind has been doing pottery for hundreds of thousands of years. Um, pinch pots are also called thumb pots. You just have a hunk of clay and you just literally you pinch your thumbs in there and you just start working the clay. Coil pots have been around for thousands of years. They've been found all over the world from Africa to Greece, New Mexico, China. They're great for building thicker walls. As you build a coil pot, you, you, you're starting with a coil of clay and you just start at the bottom and then you add coils as you go up. And as you go up, it allows you to adjust the width of the wall as you go. So that's really great for, especially for building giant big pots. So real quick, I'd like to go over the tools that we're going to be using today. Um, first of all, you're going to want um, your clay, uh, however much you want to use. You can use as big of amount of it as you want. It just depends on how big you want your piece to be. What I like to do is like make sure I have like a fist size. That's like a perfect size for making like a mug or a teacup or a small piece. Um, <clears throat> you're going to want a knife tool, a smooth metal rib and a serrated metal rib. Um, you're going to want your wooden knife tool just in case sometimes I like to use this nice smooth side here for smoothing the clay. You're going to want a needle tool for um, like scoring or for writing your chalk and a brush for water and just in case at the end if you want to clean up have a nice little sponge ready to go. So let's go ahead and begin. So another name for a pinch pot is called a thumb pot and that's because when you're starting you're going to start with your thumbs and you're just going to find wherever you know you feel like you want the center of your clay to be and you're going to start pinching in. And I like to go in kind of like a, a circle here, counterclockwise or clockwise, whichever is better for you and start pushing down and in. And as you're going in a circle, it's gonna make sure that things kind of stay even. And uh, this isn't necessarily the, the best way to do this or the right way to do this, but this is how I do it. You just start going down. I need to trim my nails because I'm getting lots of clay under them. It's time. So, as you can see, we've already started to open up the clay and it's starting to look kind of like a nest. So that's pretty much all there is to it. It's really simple. That is what a pinch pot is. And then um, I like to then use the, the this curve of my hand to kind of cradle the clay. And I use my thumb to push against that part. So it starts kind of like curving out a little bit. I don't know if you can see that. And I just slowly turn and go around the whole pot. And then use my whole thumb the clay wall gets bigger and you can always go back and do parts that you feel like are too thick like right here this is you can probably see from this angle that this side's a lot thicker so I'm gonna go in and work on that some and you can start using the outside of your hand too if it, you know if that feels easy to you you can do that I'm going to push on the bottom so that the bottom is a little bit more thin because it's pretty, pretty flat or pretty thick, excuse me. And um, I'm just going to keep going. And at this point, I'm just keeping my hand in like a cup shape. And so that way, when, as I'm pressing inside, it molds to the shape of my hand. So it'll keep its cup shape. 
And yeah, this isn't the prettiest cup in the world. That's why we like to throw, because that's where we get our nice, you know, uniform, even. This is, this is a great place to start. And a lot of beautiful pottery can be made from pinch pots. I've, I've seen some amazing things that people have done with just making pinch pots. And it blows my mind how perfect and how even and uniform their pieces can look. Some, I've seen pinch pots, I've seen coil pots that look like that they were thrown on a wheel and it, it just blows my mind. So there we have our like little half dome shape. This you'll be using a lot if you're gonna be doing sculpture. Um, you can use this shape to make the body of something. What I like to do is take newspaper and stuff it in here to keep the shape if I'm doing like a big sculpture piece. And then I'll make another coil and I'll put, I'll stuff that with some newspaper too. And then I will attach those two together. And we're going to learn how to attach uh, clay today when we do our pinch pot. But this, this here is our, or excuse me, our coil pot. This is our pinch pot. So I'm just getting the walls nice and even here. So I'm gonna do that for a while. You can also take two fingers instead of your thumb and, and do that. Or, you know, one finger, whatever works for you. So here I'm trying to um, get the, the wall of the clay a little bit more curved shape. So I'm kind of gently pushing out with my thumb, but I don't want to push too much because you don't want to break through. And I want to keep the walls pretty even. So I'm just gently pushing the clay out with my thumb. And also as you're doing this, you can feel, really feel where it's too thick or too thin. So you want to kind of avoid the spots that are too thin. So we basically have a cup here. You can obviously make this longer or wider. It really depends on what you need. If you wanna make this into like a cup, you can absolutely do that. Um, I like to make this edge even. Some people like the kind of organic shape um, and they'll just leave that. And then you can put little feet on the bottom of here, like, this, like a little salsa dish. You can also keep working until it's it's thinner so it's more suitable for a cup because this is pretty heavy i mean we didn't lose any clay as we were forming this so it was as heavy as the ball started out as if you want to get a nice edge to yours i just like to turn it upside down and i usually do this last like I, i'm gonna do some shaping here first but i just turn it upside down and i'll take my wire tool and i'll start on the side that has it's the highest, or the, excuse me, the lowest. And I'll just kind of pull the wire tool up towards myself. And you get like more of a flat um, lip there. So if you wanna make the, if you wanna make the mouth of your clay piece more narrow, what you can do is you'll take your knife tool and you will cut out a triangle. You cut out a triangle, like here's the first part, and then the second part. So you got like this triangle here, you see that? And then what you're gonna do is you're gonna score the two pieces, and scoring is basically you take something sharp and pointy, and you make these ridges in here, because that helps the clay stick together better also want to make sure that this this part at the bottom here is not doesn't come to a sharp point because that can cause the piece to crack you don't want that so I just kind of get rid of that gently and usually I'll use slip even if the clay is pretty wet like it is this is perfect or just a, a dab of water but I don't have any with me right now because <laughs> I'm not that prepared so what you're gonna do is kind of like push the two together so we get some rid of those air bubbles and you kind of just zip it up like a zipper. And then you got a more narrow mouth there. So that way the bottom's wider and the mouth is more narrow. And, <clears throat> and then you want to smooth that out so, so it disappears. This work better with the, some actual 
slip or water though. You can just use your thumb to like get rid of that there. I'll do the same right here so you can see it. And it's on. And then if you're a neat freak like I am and you don't like all these little bumps and bubbles on your piece, <clears throat> You can get rid of those pretty easily, actually. I'm gonna use some newspaper and stuff it inside of the half dome. And what that's going to do is it's going to allow me to push on this without it collapsing or losing its shape. You just stuff it in there like a turkey. Don't be afraid to push too hard. This clay is pretty tough. So, and then I'll get that nice and flat. So, now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my tool, my scoring tool, and I'm gonna go over the parts I don't like. And what this does is it will get the higher raised parts of your clay and it will score them and the parts that are lower will be untouched. So that way when you go back over it with the smooth side, it'll bring those down and kind of make them all more even. So I'm gonna take my other rib tool just cause I don't wanna stab the inside of my hand and you go over it, kind of bend it with your hand a little bit. And you just go over and just kind of scrape those scored parts off. And that's gonna smooth it out. And you'll do this a lot in sculpture. You can also do this for just like your functional pieces too. So this isn't perfect cause this is just a demonstration. I would spend a lot more time being more perfect about this and getting it nice and even and smooth. But I just want you to see what it looks like when you do it. So this side's all lumpy, so I'm gonna go over and do this side too. Scrape all that unevenness off. It's also so satisfying to do. a lot actually when we're working with the coil pot because the coil pot we're using rounded kind of coils and as you're building them up there will be valleys and peaks and so you want to smooth all those out so it's not perfect but you know it's looking pretty good and you can get a nice smooth surface there and then your inside's not looking so hot so you can kind of go in and do the same thing with the inside <clears throat> and you know make your walls look more even just pinch them until they are the thickness that you want push down on the parts that look too thin it doesn't have to be perfect this is such a fun project and also is a really useful skill to have because you're going to need it if you want to do sculpting so let's see if we can go inside and do some of that and smooth that out a bit here in, in this instance, I'm going to be using my hand to keep the clay from losing its shape. I'm just gently holding it and pushing pretty with some good force with the scraper tool. You don't have to worry about it being like absolutely perfect. The more you go, you know, it'll get better and better. Let's go ahead and scrape it inside the sun. go over these score marks a little bit with your hand and, you know you just work at it a little bit longer and, and it'll get really nice so that's that's basically the gist of a pinch pot for funsies let's take some of the clay that came off and uh, let's make put some little feet on here I got some wet clay next to me so 
Now now that I look over, I can see it. So um, I'm just gonna take off a little little bit. Make a ball. Nice and super easy. This is this is just like like an egg shape. This is what I'm gonna use for its feet. And I'm gonna try to make these all relatively the same size. <clears throat> Even this kind of makes it more or less more organic. We got little nice eggs there, and I'm gonna take. Where do I? I want to see where I want to put these first. Like kind of like there. <clears throat> If you have your needle tool, you can just kind of like make little, little spots where you want them. The further apart you make them, the wider the center of gravity is, and so the less likely it'll tip over. The closer you put them together, the smaller uh, your center of gravity is, and it's more likely to tip. So, just so you know. I'm gonna score the bottom of these guys. I'm gonna dip it in some slip. Slip dip. want to make sure that any air escapes. So I just kind of like, I start on one end and just kind of roll it on and then you just nice wiggle it so it pushes out the air if there's any air in there. So not exactly the prettiest pot in the world, but a handy trick to know and fun to do with your kids. And if you like this kind of organic rustic, it's always fun to have. I mean, you can use these for like everything. I like to put like makeup brushes and stuff in them. I'm not bleeding, by the way. That, I think, is lipstick curler. <laughs> I cut myself on my scoring tool. They are really sharp, actually. These are really sharp. So if you lose one of these in, like, your recycled clay or something, and you go in there and you are, like, grabbing out hunks of clay, you are going to cut yourself really bad. I've had friends cut themselves really bad. Luckily, I haven't, that hasn't happened to me yet. I have found some things in my recycled clay, though, that were dangerous, <laughs> but no injuries yet. But knowing that I've said that, I've probably changed myself now. All right, I'm just gonna put the extra clay aside. I'm gonna put this guy aside while the little bees kind of like get more attached. I'll wiggle them a little bit, just so nice and good on there. And then I'm not gonna put it upside down yet because those feet are still adhering. And that won't take very long before I can turn it upside down. <clears throat> All right, so we're gonna start with our oil. All right. Okay, I'm gonna do this from a different angle because my neck's hurting from doing it on that angle. So, and if you can't see this, then I'm sorry. I'm gonna try to do my best, but. So I'm going to take the clay and I'm literally just going to tear a hunk off of it. And we are going to get started on the bottom of our oil pot. So we are going to literally make these long cylindrical kind of like tubes. They're not really tubes because they're not hollow. And we're going to make oils. They are what they are. They are what they're called. So kind of like making bread. Um, you just take your dough or your clay and you roll it back and forth. And sometimes what will happen is it'll be flatter on one side. I just take it up and whack it down and it, it'll even it out a little bit. If you are getting too narrow in the middle, that's because you're pushing too hard, what you can do is just work on the outside. And I kind of, uh, when I'm rolling, I roll away gently. You don't want to push too hard. If you push too hard, you're gonna have very uneven. So I just I'm gonna tear this part. I just start in the middle 
or this end, this would be, have been the middle, and just work my way out, because that's the way the clay is gonna wanna go naturally. It's just gonna squeeze out that direction. So I just follow it and get this nice coil. So there's one coil. And I'm just gonna make a bajillion more. them all about the same size. One thing to know is the smaller you make them, the longer it is going to take to make your, your piece higher. But I'm making these small ones because these are going to go at the top where I want it to be a little bit lighter because if you have more weight at the top, it's going to be really hard to control it from flopping on itself or collapsing on itself. So I'm going to do bigger, thicker coils at the bottom where it's okay to have a lot of weight. And as I go up, I'm going to use these smaller ones. Um, as I go, we are going, we, I will show you a trick on how to make the bowls even. level actually so I'm, I don't really have to do much to it but if your piece is not level like uh, if you leave one leg longer than the other by accident or you just place them just right so it's kind of like tip and you can just gently tap it like this uh, a little bit heavier on the side that's too high until it's all pretty level I'm gonna do that a little bit anyway just so the, the bottom are a little flat and there you are and a little First, usually I would have a flat bottom for this to start. You can make a flat bottom for your pot, just make some clay. And then as you're working, you would um, score, the, score the bottom here and then you'd score your coil and you'd start going up, you know, and you'd score your coil as you go. But I'm gonna use my little doodad pot over here and I'm actually going to add on to this guy. So we're gonna make we're gonna make him taller. And you can actually do this with your pinch pots. You can start with a pinch pop and pot and then go with coils to get taller and taller. Um, I like to use the wider ones at the bottom and the more uh, narrow coils at the top so that it's not so top heavy. Um, but here, since we already have our bottom half, I don't have to, I don't have to worry about that. So we can take the feet off because I'm actually going to do that. So that, well, these are all in there pretty good. Never mind. I just don't want to smush them, but you know what? I don't really care because I mean, this isn't like a masterpiece or anything. So, all right. So we're going to take, um, these are a little on the big side, but we can make them smaller. Um, you want them to kind of be the same thickness as the wall that we're working with. So I'm going to take this guy and just make it a little smaller. And this would be the first piece we use. So we have our piece. We have scored our pinch pot, our, our base. And we're going to score the coil as well. Great. Don't score it too deep 
because the deeper it is, the more likely air bubbles can get in there that we can't push out. Generally, when the clay is this wet, you can just put these two pieces together and it should stick. I'm gonna, just to be on the little cautious side, I'm gonna add just a smidge of slip. That's a little bit stickier. So you're gonna put the two score edge, scored edges together. And you just work your way around. got your first ring like you did with the feet you're gonna kind of gently push that down so that it, it's nice and aligned and you'll notice I'm gonna take these off because they're a problem right now. <laughs> we'll put those back later. As you do this you will notice that as you're pushing it down it's gonna start like getting longer, the coil. And so you'll have like this extra bit here at the end. You just cut that off. And there we have it, our first coil. So at this point, you don't have to worry too much about how perfect the See this part is here. You see this big, like, what looks like a indent, a crack going around it. Don't worry about that too much yet, because we're gonna go back and fix that later. So I'm gonna take my next coil. Score it. And then score the top of this coil. I'm gonna start over here actually, because You'll notice these parts right here where you have the like where the two coils touch together, a lot of the times it, it'll be indented there. So I'm gonna overlap that just a bit. And don't worry if you don't have enough. You can add more, and besides this, this is gonna get longer as I push push it into place. And use your hand to keep the clay from going out. And a really important thing to know. Pretty wet clay actually. As you are working on this, if you constantly are putting it too far out, you want to make sure it's really center or slightly leaning in. As you're working with it, it's going to start flaring out. So be sure to put it very close to center or very slightly off center on the inside. Okay, make sure that's on there nice and good. And we're just going to keep going. I'm just lightly brushing this. You don't have to push hard, you just like literally just brush it across and you'll get some scoring. As you see, we are starting to get these nice lovely little rings going on and you can keep going. I have seen beautiful pots where people just go all the way up and they have this, this beautiful ribs. This is a little sloppy. I've never been terribly good at making coil pots or pinch pots, um, but we're gonna use the same technique we did the first time when we were smoothing this guy out and we're gonna go over and smooth this, all these layers together. paper. <laughs> uh, 
I just wanted to show you real quick what I'm talking about. Like, see this part right here? Come on, camera, focus. Focus. All right. It doesn't want to focus. Well, there's this little part right here that the scoring went over. It didn't get into this groove, so the higher parts around it are going to get flattened. Well, this part stays the same. That's how everything evens out. kind of bent shape. Use your thumb in the middle to press down and your fingers on the outside to guide it. Just pull it up or whatever direction is easiest for you. If, you're, if you go at it just flat like this, um, you're not going to get as wide of a surface area. You're just going to just get like a, a narrow strip like right here. So you just got this part right here. But if you bend the whole thing, you get this whole area. Also, you're more likely to accidentally score your surface. So what I'm doing here is just trying to get all these little boogery pieces off. So I'm just going to scrape them off and then brush them off with my hand. You don't want them on your piece. They're ugly. I don't know, unless you're into that thing. They get in the way. working just just so you know what I'm doing because I know what I'm doing but you don't necessarily do I'm kind of working from the bottom and then going in like a spiral up around the body piece just using the outside of my hand to scrape off the excess clay because my hands kind of occupied at the moment holding the piece so I can also scrape it on the, the wood sides in the corner, some anywhere. So we're starting to get a nice looking kind of like uniform pot. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and take out, I'm going to br brush off my surface here because you have all these little boogery pieces and you don't want those to get on your clay. Let's not accidentally get rid of our feet because we do want to see if we still want to use those. And I'm just going to get rid of all this excess clay. Don't want to get that on your piece unless you're going for that. And by all means, leave your boogers everywhere. Okay, so I'm going to go in and do the same to the inside using my hand to kind of keep the shape. And yes, I do reuse my newspaper until it's practically falling apart, but that's because I'm, I'm poor. Okay. <clears throat> so right here, I am kind of just keeping my hand here so that as I'm pushing against the clay, it doesn't, you know, go places. Because if you're as you're applying pressure, this is going to try to your clay is going to try to go places, as I said. And so I'm just taking this serrated. Uh, the, like rounded part and I'm keeping it in place with my fingers here and then this is like say this is the clay I'm just doing this thing and you, it will bend and just kind of scrape as I go and go in and scrape off all your boogers we're just gonna call them boogers from now on your crumblies whatever I just like to call them boogers had an instructor call him that once and I was like, that is the best word that ever, that is, I'm going to use that someday and here I am, I'm going to use boogers and it's a thing now. Wesley, Wesley Wright is the one who called us boogers. He is a, an amazing, he does sculpture. It, he's amazing. Uh, he does like, anim 
you call it, um, anthropomorphic, like, animal head sculpture. He does, um, he does a lot of animal sculptures that kind of portray human emotion or a theme. He's amazing. He was, uh, one of my instructors at the Santa Rosa Junior College. He's not, he's not gonna come back, which is too bad. Um, I've tried to take his class, like, three times, and each time... I've had like real life stuff happen and I have never finished that class. Um, but I have learned so much useful information and I couldn't have asked for a better teacher. He's, he's amazing. You should check out his stuff. In fact, a lot of the sculpture stuff, a lot of the, what we're doing today is sculpture techniques that I have learned from him. We're looking pretty good. I don't want to overdo it. It's kind of time consuming. You know, if you're making a big, beautiful piece and you want it to be perfect, by all means, work on it forever. You can. <laughs> um, at least it seems that way. Um, I'm just going to finish up the lip here, kind of make it look a little... You know what? I actually kind of want like a gross... <laughs> I want like a gross cut edge. Let's get like a nice jagged kind of like natural looking. Yeah. Let's do this kind of thing. I'm going to take my knife tool here and just make an uneven kind of like jagged edge. Get some of that natural but inten intentional form. This is probably going to end up being used as one of my brush holders. I mean, like, that's usually what I do with stuff that isn't like a teapot or something. <laughs> I make mostly teapots, so. All right, so let's go back in and make a little home for the feet. Um, and here I'm choosing the... Um, there's like this natural kind of like flat, like apex here where the curve comes up and then it meets this flat area. That's where I'm just going to put the feet because that's going to be like where its center of gravity is. I do want to use slip for these um, or water. water works because the clay itself is actually pretty wet so you don't really need slip but slip is like you want to use if you're working with leather hard clay and we'll go over what leather hard clay is in a future video but this is just like fresh clay taking it just fresh out of the bag it's still nice and moist sorry for using that word I know a lot of people have some kind of aversion to that word but it's a great word to describe the situation so your clay is nice and damp nice and nice and uh, moist and um, I feel like I just lost a lot of viewers saying that right now. Um, so you don't really need slip because a lot of the water in the clay is going to hold together. So there we are. We've got our little feeties. Usually I would would wait. I'd have to keep it upside down until these are like more secure. But I just want to show you what it looks like all finished. So. Here we are. It's uneven right now, but I'm gonna I'm gonna fix that in a second. So that's that's our little our little doodad. So so at this point, um, we're pretty much done. I showed you I've shown you how to make a, a pinch pot, and I've shown you how to work with coils. You can certainly work with them both on the same piece like we did here today. And the last thing you're going to do is you're going to put a chop on your piece. So if you don't know what a chop is, a chop basically is your signature for your piece. You can either use your, your needle tool or you can have a stamp that has your chop in it. I always use my needle tool. Someday I'll get a stamp, but you know what? There's just something it, like nice about doing it by hand yourself. It feels like the end, you know, you finish that piece. It's a job well done. It's over. It's like the finishing move. And there's it's just something about 
doing it yourself, but I don't know. Maybe I'm just making up an excuse for not having to chop it. Here we go. So I'm gonna put my chop on here. I'm, I usually like to put it on the bottom of the piece because I don't really want to put it on the body of the piece where somebody's gonna see it because it's just like, you know, it's kind of annoying, like product placement. It's like, oh, that's obvious. They want to, you to know who did it. And um, you can decide what your chop is. Mine and it are my initials. I got J, Z, and they kind of overlap each other there or, uh, vertically. This is filmed in a mirror image, so I'm sorry about that. But um, I got my J and I got my Z. Z for Zaber, Zaber Tooth Pottery. I'm not telling you what my first name is, uh, but if you're a pretty good sleuth, maybe you can figure that out yourself. Um, and yeah, that's, that's it. So just to finish up here to make sure it's level, like I said, just kind of tap the part that's higher. And there you are, it's all done. Got your little feet, you got your chop on there and you have now officially learned how to work with coils and making pinch pots. And if you already knew how to do that, well, that's awesome. Um, I'm surprised you stuck around this long. <laughs> if you didn't know how to do that, well, you're ready for the next video and to move on to using a wheel. So hopefully that video pretty much summed up everything that you've been wanting to know about making coil pots or pinch pots. If I left anything out or you still have questions um, feel free to comment below. I will get to them and I will answer them. Again, foil and pinch pots are a great place to start. They're a great project to do if you have kids or grandkids. They're really easy. There's something that you can do with your hands. You don't need a wheel for. So if you just have a bunch of clay lying around or you're really just starting out and you don't know where to begin, a foil pot or a pinch pot is a great way. Um, hopefully this video was fun for you and you have kids and you want to do a fun project fun for them as well. So thanks for watching today's video. Don't forget to like and subscribe and stay tuned for my next video. Bye! <laughs> I'm still here. Bye! Alright, cut this part out. Um, Alright, end video. That's not going in there. <laughs> Nobody needs to hear that. Colored eyes today. Aren't I clever? Ross. Go with my tie dye, all these different colors. Yeah. That's so cool. Action! Uh, yeah, the wheel actually wasn't invented until the Mesopotamian times. Until the pinch pot. Cut. <laughs> Hi.